Mr. Sean McComb. Have a seat. Have a seat. Well, welcome to the White House. Uh, let me start off by saying thank you to a leader of unbelievable passion and expertise and dedication, and somebody who every single day wakes up uh, and thinks about three things: either his family, basketball, or how <laughs> to give every child a, a world-class education. Our Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan. Hey. I also want to thank our members of Congress uh, who are here today. Uh, I am thrilled uh, to have them here and, and always encourage all members of Congress to focus on education and, and teachers. And I am thrilled to be welcoming uh, all our state and national teachers of the year. So give them a big round of applause. Good job. This is a phenomenal group, in addition to being very good looking. <laughs> uh, the best of the best. And uh, they'd be the first to say that uh, they're only here because they're surrounded by outstanding teachers who give all to their students uh, every single day. Uh, today is a chance to thank uh, not just the teachers on this stage, but teachers all across the country. Uh, we really can't say enough about how important their role is in, in making sure that uh, America succeeds. Uh, so thank you for what you're giving our children and, and what you're giving our nation. Uh, now, it's been a while since I was in school. Uh, but I still remember all the wonderful teachers uh, who made me who I am, who opened the world up to me, uh, who made me feel that maybe uh, I had something to offer uh, and maybe saw things in me uh, before I saw them in myself. Uh, we all had teachers like that. Talk to anybody who succeeded in business, or written a play, or invented an app, or broken an athletic record, and they'll tell you about a teacher or a coach who inspired them and who challenged them and taught them values and encouraged them to be curious and ask questions and explore new realms and new ideas. Everybody's got somebody like that in their lives. That's what great teachers do. They set us on a better path. And they do it even though we ask so much of them. Teachers don't get uh, an off day, even when they're exhausted, uh, even when you're up all night with your own kid, uh, even if you've got bills or something personal on your mind. Once you're in front of that class, uh, you've got eager minds depending on you. And what a lot of people may not realize is how emotionally taxing teaching can be, because great teachers really care about their students. Uh, you carry their struggles with you. Uh, well after the school day ends. You worry about them. Uh, you're often the ones they go to with their troubles and their fears. And sometimes you can see that they've got something on their minds even if they don't talk to you about it. Sometimes uh, they even reach back after they've gone off to college and, and may need a little advice. A and it's that all-encompassing commitment, that love that you feel for your students that makes so many teachers go the extra mile. It's why uh, Many of you dip into your own pockets to pay for classroom supplies. That's why you spend your nights and weekends thinking about new ways to make your lessons come alive and why you work hard to build relationships with your students' families because you want to make sure they all have the support that they need outside of the classroom as well as in it. So being a teacher is a 24-7 job, and yet uh, many say there's nothing in the world they'd rather do. Uh, and that's the kind of commitment that the guests we have up on this stage today uh, exhibit every day. We've got teachers here from just a few miles away. Uh, we've also got teachers uh, who came from uh, the Mariana Islands. They teach everything from biology to music to special education. What connects them is how they challenge their kids to reach their full potential, the creativity and passion that they bring to their work instead of just going through the motions or teaching to the test. 
What separates them is the lasting impact that they have on their students' lives. Uh, and that is the story of today's uh, primary honoree, uh, our National Teacher of the Year for 2014, Mr. Sean McComb. Give Sean a big Now, uh, I wish I could say this is the biggest thing that, that happened to Sean uh, this year, but uh, that, that little bundle right there is Sean's. So uh, we, are, we clearly are ranked uh, uh, second or third uh, in terms of big stuff happening in Sean's life. But, um, you know, when Sean was a high school student, he dealt with some pretty serious problems at home uh, and spent his days feeling apathetic and disengaged. Uh, and then he entered Mr. Schertz's English class. And Mr. Schertz was one of those teachers who changes everything. He made Sean want to work hard. When Sean's mom passed away, Mr. Schertz gave Sean the strength to deliver her eulogy. When Sean went to college, it was, as he put it, through the force of Mr. Schertz's will. So Sean himself saw the impact that a teacher could have in a child's life. And it was Mr. Schertz's example that led Sean to become an English teacher himself. Uh, today at uh, Patapsco High School and Center for the Arts in Baltimore, Sean works with kids in a college readiness program called Advancement via Individual Determination or AVID. And it's aimed at the kind of student Sean was in high school. Students who have the ability to do the work, but need that extra push to reach their full potential. Among the last two graduating classes in, Av in the AVID uh, program, 98% were admitted to uh, a four-year college. And they earned more merit scholarship money than the rest of the graduating class combined. It's a tribute to Sean uh, that one of his students asked him, what do you think about me becoming a teacher? Sean asked him what subject he wanted to teach, and his student said, it doesn't matter, I just want to have as much fun as you do every day. <laughs> and Sean tries to instill in his students a sense of respect and obligation to each other. Uh, as one of his students said, I feel like I'm not learning on my own here, I learn from everyone. Uh, and I think it speaks volumes about the kind of example Sean sets for his students that as part of his application for this award, the parents uh, of one of his students wrote a letter on his behalf. And they wrote, our daughter had the typical teenage drama in school that at times really got her depressed about school and life in general. We reached out to Sean for help with getting her back on track. No matter his schedule load, if he knew one of his students was in need, whether for a shoulder to cry on or a calming word of encouragement, he'd be there to help. And there's an image from Sean's application essay that captures what he and all the teachers here are trying to accomplish. Uh, Every child has an invisible chalkboard attached to their hearts and minds that they carry with them through their lives. Some people they meet write messages of love and support. Some leave messages of negativity and doubt. It's a teacher's job to erase the negative messages and fill those boards with caring words and inspire confidence and strengthen values. Now some of the today's students might not even know what a chalkboard is anymore, but <laughs> they do know that what a teacher gives them stays with them for a lifetime because teachers matter. Uh, when Michelle and I talk to students, we often tell them education is a two-way street. It's our job to provide students with great schools and great teachers, and it's their job to do their homework and work hard and do their best. The people you elect have to make sure the teachers and school districts have the resources they need to do their jobs well. And investing in education has been a top priority of mine since the day I took office. And it falls on all of us to make sure that we're encouraging our kids and reading to them and teaching them uh, healthy, successful habits that set them on a path to college and a career and a lifetime of citizenship. Uh, teachers who work hard to inspire their kids every day, they too deserve our support because these are our kids uh, that we're, uh, we're grooming for all the challenges that they're going to face uh, throughout the next generation. So I could not be prouder uh, of Sean uh, and 
all the teachers who are here today. Uh, Sean, I'm pretty sure Mr. Schertz would be proud of you too. Uh, and, and to all the teachers who are out there, uh, and the millions who are working hard in classrooms all across our nation, uh, we want to thank you as well. Uh, you're doing the Lord's work. And with that, I'm going to present Sean with his apple. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you, Mr. President and Mr. Secretary, for your ongoing commitment to education, for your efforts to maintain the hope of opportunity for all children, and for having this group of teacher representatives to the White House this afternoon. It is a privilege and honor for us, our families, and the communities we serve to receive this recognition. I am blessed to be among the over 50 passionate and dedicated educators before you. This is an incredible group of talented and inspirational professionals who take deep pride in making a difference for children. I am a firm believer that we are each a product of the people who surround us in life, to our family and friends, our students, colleagues, and communities, and all of those who make us the people we are today. Thank you so very much. I became a teacher because I had incredible teachers who were able to shine a light of hope and possibility into a dark time in my life. Teaching is my calling to do that for others and an opportunity to spend my career living purposefully, helping children fulfill the promise of their lives. Teaching is an opportunity to band together with others who deny the common assumption that demographics determine destiny. It comes with challenges and difficulties like any work worth doing, but also with the priceless rewards of changing lives, instilling hope in the hearts of children, and of seeing potential come to fruition. Like each of these teachers before you, I am not here alone. My students are with me here today because they have become a part of who I am. Ashley taught me that what matters is, that, is the quality of what you have to say, not how loud you speak. Michael taught me that it's not how much you can see, but that you always see the best in every situation. Kiana taught me that bearing burdens can make you stronger, and when you're finally able to put them down, that strength can lift up others. And Brianna has taught me our lives are not determined by our past, but by our present choices and faith in our future. As a father, I hope to pass some of these lessons on to my newborn son. Like parents across this nation, I will be relying on our trusted and successful public, public schools for his education. Schools filled with teachers who help students fall in love with learning, who cultivate individual strengths and inspire students to be their best. And I want the schools that he will attend to do what schools across this country are now and have always been doing, working to be better. We know that change is hard, and we do it when it is in the best interest of children. This change must be undertaken judiciously. It must value the complexity of the work, and it must be done with civil and critical conversations that respect the knowledge and experience of our classroom teachers, teachers like those before you today. We stand here because of those important people who invested in each of us, and here we stand for the importance of investing in each and every child. May God bless America's educators, and God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you.